Today I'm gonna answer all of your questions about the A-frame we're building out here in the forest. Why did I decide to build an A-frame and not a normal shaped cabin? What will the A-frame be used for? And why this particular spot? What dimensions are the A-frame? I will also show you how the cabin will be heated, how I decided on this specific design. Is there any permits that you need to build something like this? And the biggest questions of them all, how much does it actually cost to build an A-frame? First off, I'm gonna answer some questions on my own, and then a bit later, Isak is dropping by, and we're gonna sit down, and we're gonna answer some questions together. So why did I choose to build an A-frame? Why this specific shape and not a normal cabin with straight walls? And the simple answer is that I'm a very aesthetical person. I think that's how you say it, at least. I prefer, prefer things to look good rather than be practical. So the walls, yeah, they're tilting a lot and there's a lot of floor space that I'm not able to use to walk on, but that could be storage and so much on. And we also designed this, this big triangle back here is gonna be a big, massive window. And the, then over there, three big windows as well. And that's why I chose this design because all these windows will allow me to feel that I'm actually a part of the forest and not closed in by the walls. And how will I use this cabin? Well, it's going to be my future studio. Right now I'm working in the main cabin, in the living room. So whenever I'm working, which is most of my awake hours, I'm taking up the entire living room with two blue monitors just lighting up the whole place. And that's not very cozy for either me or Christina to be around. And it also feels like I'm always at work. And having a designated place to go to work is such an important thing to be able to do this for a long time, I think. Actually separate private life from work. So this is the place I'm going to record my videos from and have live streams, record my podcast, write my newsletter. Everything that is work related will be in this cabin. And why did I choose this particular place in the forest? It's a hundred meters away from our main cabin. So it's not very practical, but like I told you before, I'm choosing what looks good over what's practical. And when I chose this spot, I actually walked around in our entire forest. It's two hectare, we say in Sweden, 20,000 square meters. And we just walked around and got a feeling of where it should be placed. And when I arrived at this place, it just had a complete different calmness over it compared to the, all the other places in the forest. And it was like a clearing. It was no trees here, like a, almost like a big round circle. And I didn't understand why to begin with, but then I found these small markings like uh, old cement pipes and some wooden sticks that some old residents have probably had used this thing or this area for something. Maybe they had cows or animals up here because that would make the most sense, but it just felt like the perfect place to have it at. And the windows would then be facing the main cabin and the rest of the forest. It felt completely natural. How did you come up with the design? And it's actually not me that came up with the design. I saw it on Isak's Instagram to begin with. Uh, I've always loved the shape of an A-frame, but I didn't know exactly how, how I wanted it. Uh, and when I saw it on Isak's Instagram, I reached out and s just started asking questions how you did it. I needed more space mm -hmm. uh, because it's pretty small. Uh, but I also, in my place where I have my A-frame, it's I wanted the view, I wanted more windows. Because like, yeah, we have a big window that way on the other end, but then yeah. it's basically gonna be closed on this end. So like, it would feel way more na more narrower, if that's the word. Narrower. Narrower, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean at least. <laughs> yes. To have the windows that way, it will open up it completely. Not yeah. only visually to actually see something, but also, also height wise. Yeah. What is the square meters? And then I guess there is 30 square meters on the outside of the measurement, yes, so to yes. speak. But inside measurement, like not exactly walking possibilities because it's a tilted wall, but inside floor basically it's would be 22. Yeah, tw 22, something like that. Yeah, so 22 square meters is the inside measurement because the corners would basically, I will put shelves and desks and so on. That's how I'm gonna use that. That so it doesn't become like dead space. What kind of materials are being used? It's uh, lightweight beams in in Sweden these ones behind us here yeah uh, I think it's called shipboard very easy to use they are lightweight and my original idea behind this was to, to build a kit and that I can in flat package like drive it out on the mountain with my snowmobile and yeah. bu build a shelter in, in like two days 
Yeah. So lightweight was a well, priority. A priority mm. from the beginning. So and it in this space it was actually very good because we <laughs> yeah. have <laughs> we like the foundation we have is built from logs basically and we carry that from the car all the way up here or the trailer and total I think is almost like 200 meters 150 yeah. maybe uh, and that was really 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 heavy yeah like weight wise it made a lot of sense and as you saw we got the frame up really quickly yeah also it's pre-cut from 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 the the factory so that means we we don't have to use any tools more than like it's also screws and glue yeah we made all of this in just two days or something yeah. we better bit of the foundation day one and then day two and three we got the, the whole thing up yeah. with the roof and everything why not build it bigger <laughs> we have seen a lot of questions about like it looks really small like why are you building such a small cabin and i think you get a bit tricked by the dimensions when you see it on youtube maybe i'm not sure because it's actually when i stand here in the middle i can't even reach the top of the inner roof oh. um, and i think maybe a lot of you are misunderstanding that the spaces you see here in between the beams that's going to be the insulation so we're not going to shrink it down even more the measurements you see here on the inner inner triangle is going to be the inner walls basically i think it's 35 centimeters or something of insulation yeah uh, walls much. and floor um, so it's not that small at all actually it's of course if this was a uh, main house that you would live in, yeah, then, <laughs> then it's too small. Um, but this is just an office, uh, so it makes sense to have... I don't need bigger than this. It doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna have like a cozy corner in the other end of the house or the cabin uh, with a bed or something and then a desk with... Uh, yeah, where I can a work. Work workspace. A workspace, exactly. And uh, then some storage. And also the size is also... I mean, we live in Sweden and we have very cold temperatures. We, yeah. we need to heat it up in, 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 in some way. So yeah. if, you big, if you build a big house, it's, it costs too much to, to have it yeah. just for a workspace on, on winter time. It, I mean, it's, you have to think about that also. Yeah, I can recognize that now when we insulated the hallway in the main cabin, when I now have the door open, yeah, it's warm in the whole house, but I need way more firewood yeah. to keep it warm as well. So um, maybe that would lead us on to the next question here as well. A lot of you asked how we're gonna heat the cabin and we have had many different ideas, but since I'm not gonna be here 24 seven, like I'm not gonna live here, I will be here most of my working hours, so to speak, but not sleeping here. Um, so the point, the idea I have is to put in a kind of a powerful radiator since, it, since it's such a small area I think we'll heat it up really well yeah. and the insulation will keep it the reason we are gonna have a lot of gear in this like all our lenses the computer yeah. Yeah, all technical stuff that can't get damaged and then we need a lot of insulation not just for comfort but also moisture safety. and, uh, and yeah. everything yeah exactly but if I need something like a more of a cozy solution I will can, I can put in a stove um, in the future if I want to gonna be hot it's gonna be like a sauna like <laughs> yeah that's i don't think it's gonna be that if it's gonna be very efficient but not very smart i think what are the dimensions of your a-frame yeah, or we can say the outer measurements it's 6.9 meters long long exactly and 4.4 wide this way yeah. yeah so it's quite big actually what about permits and stuff do you need to register anything short answer no <laughs> uh, you need to be under what is it 30 square meters yeah. uh, which we are so when it's under 30 square meters in sweden you don't need a permit but you can't build you know several of these houses you told me you can build two yeah two yeah without a permit so to speak but after that you need a permit or if you big build something bigger in this area you can just say hey i'm gonna build this yeah <laughs> that's true what did you use for the foundation mud screw maybe we can pick one up actually it's a badass screw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one. <coughs> this. So it's quite large. Yeah. Um, so we put these in the ground with a very specific drill that can actually manage this. And then we put a metal rod, what do you call that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, in this. And then wood on top of that, basically. Those one, the ones we're sitting on now. So works this, surprisingly well. Yeah, this kind of screws works very well in... I think you call it untouched ground if it's not mm -hmm. digged or ah no, okay like the, here yeah the, mm. the 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 cold will not yeah get a grip on it yeah uh, so it's like instead of 
concrete or... Yeah, but it makes sense because sometimes you don't really know what... You had no idea when we started drilling <laughs> what it was going to be like. So sometimes you hit some rocks and then you have to switch places or yeah. you can actually... Since it's so big and powerful, you can actually move the stones in the ground yeah. with the amount of pressure that goes down. And we have eight of those? Yeah. No, ten. Ten no, now. No, no, we, we put two ten, more yes. in today. Yeah. Exactly. So eight for the the main frame, I would say. Yeah. And then two more for the porch. And now to the most asked question, I would say, what does a build like this cost? From the beginning, I actually um, I went to the bank and just asked for a loan uh, because it's it's a lot of money, but it's not you know it's not millions. And uh, I told them about the situation what we're gonna build and I showed them my finances and what I have in savings and my salary and everything and they were like yeah it looks perfect um, no problem and then I got a call the next day again from the same person she said she said like you know what I've looked at this a bit more and we can't give you a loan I was like <laughs> <laughs> okay and this was when we had started building yeah. building everything uh, and the only, she said that the only reason they don't want to borrow me the money um, was because we're not going to have water and sewage. They didn't count this as a safety, safe enough building to have as a loan, as a safety. Okay. Okay. Which I think is so stupid. Like, so that was a bit worrying. So now make sure to like this video so I can <laughs> earn a bit of money on it. <laughs> and we have made an uh, assumption, eh? that's not the right word. Yeah. Estimate, maybe, is the yeah. right word. What we're hoping <laughs> that we're that we're gonna pay for this, um, but we're bi with building materials and the work force, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. We're hoping to go under. Let's see how to translate this to dollars. Then fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. That's the aim, at least. For my point of view, yeah, I want to build it as cheap as possible, but at the same time, I want to be really happy with something yeah. I build. So there's no reason for me to cheap out. I want well, I the door I want yeah. and I want the floor I want. I don't want to be annoyed every time I walk in like, oh, I should have put a, a few thousand extra on this. When it comes to the insulation and so on, uh, we're choosing stuff that is not toxic for us, basically, because if I'm going to be in here all day long and I'm going to breathe the air and the stuff we're going to work with if we're putting in, yeah. in the insulation, if we're going to breathe that stuff in, we want it to be healthy. So insulation is going to be wooden fiber in a way and no plastic and just, just wood actually. In my next video I'm gonna surprise Christine with a total makeover of our upstairs studio. I'm gonna sand down the floors, I'm even gonna paint and even decorate the place as well. And the best part is that you can watch this video right now. You don't have to wait a whole week to see it and you can watch it before everyone else if you are a Nebula subscriber. If you don't know, Nebula is an independent streaming platform, which I'm very, very proud to be a part of. Nebula is home to a ton of exclusive ad-free content. That's where I post all of my bonus videos, like part two of my A-frame build, my guided meditation video, and even a video about the six books that changed my life. The best and the cheapest way to get access to this video about the surprise hallway renovation is with the CuriosityStream and Nebula bundle deal. And right now, for a limited time, they're having a massive sale. It's 42% off the normal price. So you're getting access to all of my bonus content on Nebula and CuriosityStream for less than $12 for a whole year. CuriosityStream is the best place on the internet if you're like me and like to watch documentaries. They have thousands of high quality documentaries and one I would really like to recommend is this one, Eat Like a Viking. It's a documentary where this guy travels to my hometown Stockholm to learn about the Viking lifestyle. Not only what they were eating, but also how they were living and what we can learn from them today. And me, as a Swedish person that have grown up learning about the Vikings in school and even gone to several Viking festivals, I learned a lot from this documentary as well, so I know you're gonna love this one. And besides that one, CuriosityStream have many others covering topics like history, nature, science and technology. Personally, I honestly don't know about a better deal that exists anywhere in streaming. You get two streaming sites with amazing content that you will actually watch. And like I said, right now, for a limited time, they're having a massive sale. It's 42% off the normal price. By signing up using my link in the description, you're actually directly supporting the build of the A-frame, hallway, hallway renovation and all the other projects we have going on. So every sign up actually makes a huge difference. So head over to curiositystream.com slash Kalle or simply click the link in the description as well. 
and you can go watch the surprise video for Christina about the hallway renovation right now.